Welcome back, Mission Control. Well, in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about fish food. This is a question we get quite a bit. What type of fish food do we use? And it's also one of the major challenges uh, going forward. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So we have four different sizes of fish food. Here we go, look at that size. This is for the bigger fish. And then your next bigger fish. Your small itty bitty fish. And you're kind of in between small and bitty fish. So we keep our fish food in these airtight uh, pet food containers. And we bought fish food two years ago and haven't bought any more since, just because the density of fish that we have is pretty low. Now each of these bags uh, is, some, I think, somewhere between $40 and $75. I can't remember exactly, it's been a while. But we searched the web trying to find organic fish food. And we, we couldn't find it at the time. I think since then somebody has kind of opened it up. There's only like one in the, the uh, nation, but we already bought this food, uh, so we're gonna use it all up, not gonna let it go to waste. And um, that's important. It's important to think about fish food. Uh, it is the only thing really that we're bringing into the system from outside is that fish food. So uh, there's some big challenges with that. For example, when you have fish food, normally it consists of fish meal. And fish meal is just ground up fish coming from the ocean. So when they go out there and they got their big nets uh, and they're bringing up fish from the ocean, there's a bunch of garbage fish, I, I hate to say it that way, but fish that we don't eat that comes up uh, and they grind them all up. And essentially it takes 10 garbage fish for every one good fish that you wanna feed uh, is what ends up being the ratio. So every time you eat a fish grown in a pond uh, with fish food, you're really killing 10. That, that's not sustainable. Now that's a big problem, and it's one that we have an idea of how to solve, and we'll get to that. Uh, but for right now, we're kind of stuck where everybody else is at, and that's with fish food that we can buy that's high quality protein, which is another big challenge. So let's go talk about high quality protein and why that's important. I'm at the back of HAB1 right now. This is the uh, northwest corner of the building. Uh, Mount Fiji, as uh, Wrangler Star would call it, is directly that way in front of us right now. This area, while it's being used for storage and tools right now, actually has a higher purpose. And it has to do with the fish food. So we knew about this problem before we built this building, and we just haven't gotten to it yet. And it's something we're hoping we can get to this year, which is to make our own fish food. And there's a few different ways that you can do that. And uh, the, the most popular one is, I would say, uh, red wigglers, um, worms, this is vermic composting, vermiposting, vermicomposting, I think is what it is, uh, or black, sol black soldier flies, larvae. Uh, those are two ways that I've seen people uh, that are kind of popular growing your own fish food sustainably um, to, to feed your fish. And the great thing about that is they're waste recyclers that end up creating a great compost that you could use uh, to help grow vegetables in a more traditional uh, agriculture setting where you're using dirt. A third way, and the way that we're kind of looking at, is minnows. Uh, in fact, we grew them in our original office experiment for this exact purpose, is to see if we could get them to breed. If they do breed uh, in captivity, you can have an endless supply of food uh, as long as you have enough space and you're doing everything right uh, for your trout, because trout are carnivorous. They'll, they'll eat smaller fish. They'll eat themselves as they're smaller if you really let them. Um, so. The minnows, good thing about minnows is they eat plants, they eat algae. Uh, they eat, um, yeah, plants, organic material. So they don't need to have other forms of protein coming in the system. They'll eat plants and, and convert them into what protein they need. So if we were to have some big bats of algae, um, or even if we were to cordon off sections of our fish tanks, since we have quite a bit of area, and just grow minnows in that area and then dip down essentially and flip them over for the trout to have. We have to maintain the right ratio of minnows to trout. That's just math um, in organics biology at that point. Um, but we could actually have algae growing, which will help clean water uh, for when we deploy the system uh, long-term. We're thinking, you know, if you go to some place where the water's really, really dirty, there's a lot of different species of algae and they've been known to actually take like heavy metals out of the system, uh, clean up stuff, clean up water, um, so you could actually, it becomes uh, a step towards potable water, drinkable water. 
So you can grow algae in what's called a photobioreactor, bio which is essentially just a big tank with lights in it that has all the right stuff set up for algae. And with our digester, uh, the digest state, which we'll talk about in the future episode coming off of it, is filled with organic matter uh, and nutrients that algae would just blossom on. Uh, so you could really have a lot of algae in this area. You know, one big tank, lots of algae, throw, get your uh, minnows in there and they could be going nuts. And then it's just a matter of how do you make that all work. I kind of like the minnow idea. I got turned on to algae because I was looking at algae as a, a form of fuel and I did a lot of simulation on that trying to figure it out and ended up the math doesn't work out for you if you're going to do biodiesel or ethanol. Um, we'll talk about that when we get to the digester in a little more depth, but it's a great source of food for the minnows. So you got three, you got uh, little red wigglers, you have the black soldier fly larvae, and then you have uh, the minnows are ways that we could create our own fish food right here. Or you could do all three if you wanted and grind it all up. Now, the challenge here is would you want to go put your hands into some black, so larvae, or black soldier fly larvae and scoop them up and go throw them in? I'm thinking that for the farmers out there, that would be no problem. But remember, we're trying to design a system that can go for anyone. Would anyone want to do that? That's a tough one. We're going to have to deal with that. There's some real psychology there about putting your hands down or a scoop down, opening up and seeing all the, the larvae, you know, eating everything or the worms wriggling. The minnows seem to be a little bit more like easily accepted in, in that particular way, but who knows? Anyway, we'll, we'll see what that all ends up looking like. Okay, so how does thinking about Mars help us with fish food? Well, this one I think is pretty easy. You can't haul all this food with you. That would be the same as hauling all the fertilizer with you, right? So you end up hauling something. So what are you gonna do that makes it easy to self-sustain yourself uh, to generate the fertilizer that you need. You need the fish to get the fish. You need fish food to get fish food. You either have to truck something in, like what we do right now from scredding, or you have to make it on site. So Mars, again, just thinking about that outpost out there by themselves where everything's closed, you gotta ship it in, or you gotta grow it on site, um, really helps you think about how we could do things better here on Earth. If you think about it just on Earth like what we did, hey, you go on the internet, you search, and you buy, you hit click, and two days later, if you have Amazon Prime, it shows up. That doesn't happen on Mars. And it won't happen in places where we wanna send this system. So again, thinking about that desert outpost out there in space helps us design a better system here. Anyway, uh, next time we're gonna be talking about digester power as we continue going through this series of the system overview and what it is all about. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about the digester. It, that's a pretty cool system. Anyway, for now, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian.